So in this video, we're going to be looking at how to make a very simple tree by hand. Uh, so there is a lot of different techniques you can use for making a tree. Speed tree is a great one, especially if you're doing realistic trees. Um, but also there's a, a lot of difference in the way you might wait, make one, depending on how close you are going to be able to view that tree. So the uh, pipeline that we're going to be using here is pretty simple. So we're going to do Maya and then ZBrush and then finish off in Substance Painter. So first of all, you need to know what your tree is going to look like, how much detail it's going to have and how big it's going to be. So we're going to do a little bit of ZBrushing on ours. So let's start off with a cylinder and I'm just going to start in uh, Maya here basically to get the uh, proportions correct. And I just want to make the trunk first of all, and I'm not too worried about the um, the topology right now because I'm going to be taking this through ZBrush to add a little bit of sculpting later on. So I'm just going to extrude this out here and kind of get the, the shape of the tree. So this is going to be a stylized tree um, and be pretty simple. So the tree will be broken down into a 3D sections and 2D sections. So think about cards like we use for grass. We're going to be doing that for the leaves and for some of the smaller branches. So the only thing we really want to pass through ZBrush is any of the, of the bigger branches. So, so you need to think about which branches will be ZBrushed and which ones will be either secondary branches or be completely 2D card branches. And this is something that's kind of hard to figure out, but you don't want to give yourself too much to sculpt because um, it can take quite a while if there's a lot of fiddly bits. And as the branches get smaller, you open up to you open yourself up to the possibility of problems happening with you know very thin meshes and stuff like that. And we want to try to keep this quite simple and the time frame of making it quite short as well. We don't want to give ourselves lots of problems. Um, we want to make sure it's easy to unwrap and stuff like that. So what I'm doing here is creating a second branch just because uh, this is all going to be dynameshed. Um, so I'm just going to slot these in together. They don't all have to be extruded at this point. And I'm just trying to figure out the what shape I'm going to have this tree. And when you've got your base uh, branches in place, you want to design the canopy and you can do that uh, very simply by creating some volumes uh, just to kind of fill out and, and get the feel for the overall how heavy the top will be, the kind of shape of it. So this won't be um, spheres in the end, uh, but depending on what type of tree you've got, it's a good way of, of figuring out how you want to place the leaves. So I'm just holding B and middle mouse button to make a soft select so that I can kind of get a good overall shape for this. So for the branches, the next step for them will be to go into ZBrush, but before we leave Maya, we may as well make our leaves and our smaller branches. So I'm just gonna move over here a little bit. And the leaf can be done, say, completely in Photoshop if you want more painterly leaves and you want more control. You can make yourself bunches of leaves. But for me, I'm going to do them as 3D leaves and then we'll bake them down onto planes and this will just allow me to get a little bit of variation in the normal maps for each leaf. Now this is gonna be a stylized tree so I don't want them to be too detailed, uh, but they're gonna be kind of like long, thin leaves. I don't have any particular leaf I'm going for here because my tree for my scene is slightly alien, um, but it's just generally gonna be a, a leafy shape. So I don't need to worry about uh, topology or anything like that with these because this is going to be baked down. I've made my leaf here and I've also made sure that it's smoothable so I can get a nice shape to it. And then I just want to assign a new material to that. And I'm going to call it leaf. And this is so that when we bake this down, we can use a material ID. So I'm just going to duplicate that off to one side. So I've got a copy of it. 
Right, next we want to do our smallest branches. So we're going to arrange these leaves onto a branch now. And then we're going to build up those branches to give ourselves some nice cards to use to populate the canopy of our tree. Uh, so a good way of doing that is if we go to the generate tab, uh, we can find paint effects here. If we select paint effects, we can draw out some 3D geometry onto the grid. And if you have a tablet or pen sensitivity, pen pressure sensitivity, we can actually use that to our advantage and create some nice branch shapes. Now it does take a little bit to get used to this as it's quite sensitive, um, but it's uh, pretty powerful and we can also add it, edit it later if we get some shapes that we're not so happy with. So first of all, I'm just going to create an initial branch. Nothing too complicated. And once we've drawn that out, we can, we can go to our settings at the side here and we can change the sample density. And if it's a little bit wobbly as well, you can use smoothing here and that'll just soften and even out that curve so it's a little less wobbly. Then we can go to, with this selected, we can go to modify, convert and convert paint effects to polygons. Now when you do this, um, make sure to go to the little box here and just make sure that quad output is on. I think by default it isn't, so just make sure that is so that you get a nice quadded effect. And even after that's converted to a polygon, you can still come back to these settings here and change stuff like the sample, sample density. Now we want a few more polys that way. You can go to the second tab, default brush for, and we can go down to the mesh tab here and we can increase, and we can increase the density horizontally as well. So it's come out black at the moment, but that's just because it's not got a material assigned. So if we right click that, we can go down to assign a new material and we can call this branch and give that a branchy color. Now I just want to come in here and I want to grab these top vertexes and just move them a little bit smaller so that it doesn't just end. Just neaten that up a little bit. And same with the bottom. I'm just going to delete those bottom faces. And then we want to get our leaf. I'm just going to make the stem of this leaf a little bit smaller actually. Okay, and then I want to snap the vertex to the stem. And then we can control D to duplicate that. And then holding V, we can snap that to the branch. So we just want to duplicate these along the branch, uh, holding V to snap to the branch and just intersect them a little bit so that you can't see the base of the leaf. And then you just want to work your way along um, placing these leaves here and you can rotate them a little bit. Mainly you want to keep them flat because they need to be able to bake down to the, um, the plane that we'll put underneath them. But we can go along here and just arrange them. And you can scale them as well if you want some variations. With that first branch done, we can combine those and then snap the pivot to the bottom of the branch. So now let's go back to our generate paint effects. Now I'm going to make another branch. Okay, so I've made two uh, branches here and you can vary the size of the leaves a little bit, but don't go overboard with that because generally the size difference between leaves don't tend to be all that huge on a tree and it can start to look a little bit weird so you can vary the uh, the size of the leaves on these individual branches but then when you come to place them on the tree itself you want to kind of try to stick to them being a similar size overall okay so now we've got these two done what we can do is create a bigger branch and then i'm going to increase the i go to the next tab over i'm going to increase the scale of them And then again, modify, convert to polygons and assign the branch material. And then I'll just move these two over here with that other leaf. And then I'm going to duplicate them and scale them down. And then I can duplicate these and begin to apply them to this bigger branch.
And so the one that we're making now, this is going to make up one of the cards that we can then fill that canopy out with. As you can see, as I actually lay these out, I'll start to figure out what I need in terms of extra branches and stuff like that. Um, and I can kind of make them as I go until I've got enough to fill out the scene. Okay, so once that's done, we just want to do the same process again and make ourselves a few variations of this big branch. Okay then, so now we've got our smallest branches, these will be baked down to cards, so what we're going to do is make some uh, cutouts for them to bake to, uh, but before we do that we can jump back onto our main branch here and take this into ZBrush for some sculpting. So what I'm going to do is just export these two pieces here, um, just the uh, main 3D branches, and I'm just going to export them as OBJs into my ZBrush folder. And I'm going to call that uh, simple tree trunk. Okay, so in ZBrush, let's import our tree. And drag that out on screen, go to edit. Let's get a nice material on here. Right then, so we've got our tree. Now we just need to DynaMesh this together. And at the moment, it's quite low poly. So if I DynaMesh this, I'm going to get all these lines in it, which then I will have to smooth out. So before I do that, I'm going to go to geometry here and I'm going to subdivide this a little bit. It will make it a little bit more uh, smooth, but that's fine. That's what I want. And then I'm going to delete lower subdivisions, go down to DynaMesh and DynaMesh that together. OK, so it's quite um, it's quite simple at the moment, but that's fine because we're going to make a lot of changes to this. So first of all, I'm going to grab a move brush and I'm just going to pull out a bit of the bottom of this tree to create some variation in the um, sides of it, make it seem a little bit more interesting. So uh, it gives the uh, kind of the impression that the roots are going down and into the ground, various shapes. Now, how much of this you do, depending on what type of tree you have. You know, some are just straight down, almost completely cylindrical, right through into the ground. Some are almost on stilts because the roots are sticking up so much. So then I'm going to go to Clip Curve Brush and just make sure that's clipped all to the same kind of level. And I'm just going to remesh that by dragging out next to the, uh, the sculpt. And then with clay build up, I'm just going to build in a bit more of this detail here. Okay, I'm going to go up a little bit higher in the resolution now. Now what I don't want is this sharp spiky edges here because they will not remesh nicely. So I'm going to soften them slightly. And then remesh until I get something nice shaped nicely. So I might have to go up a little bit in resolution. Okay, so I'm going to go over this and sculpt it, and what I want really is kind of like a mid-level of sculptural detail, because I will get the rest of it with the tiling texture that's going to go up it. So we are going to do a custom texture for this, but we should also put a tiling texture up it as well. And I'm just going to sculpt in some quite simple detail, but just enough to kind of blend it all together. And when you get some very thin branches, make sure that you don't push through by um, where it gets too thin you can end up going like this so if you are struggling with that you can always put back face mask on to find back face mask you can go to brush you can go to auto masks and you'll find back face mask there now you need to put that on depending on what brush you're using um, but this will just stop you pushing through at the back there If you find that maybe your tree's getting a little bit too skinny in areas, you can go to the inflate brush and just inflate bits of it. Or if holding minus, you can deflate some of it as well. Inflate? Deflate? Is it deflate? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I forget. 
Uh, but yeah, you can you can skinny it out anyway, um, reduce some of the thickness of it. So I am now going to use the move brush to just get this into a more uh, kind of put some more angular shapes in this to more accurately represent the type of tree that I'm going for. I want it a little bit more gnarly. Gnarled. Gnarled. Okay, so I've got it into a pretty good place there. So I'm going to go to deformation. I'm going to just polish this a little bit. First of all, I'm going to remesh it. And then I think I'll polish it. Not too much though. Yeah. And then I'm going to use the clay polish here with a little bit of sharpness to just um, sharpen it all up. And then I'm going to go back in with uh, Orbs Cracks and make some of the overall shapes in this after I remesh it at a higher level. Okay. So on 300,000 here now. So I can start firming up some of them details. Now this is why you don't want to go too far with what level of detail you do because if you do every single piece of um, every single detail of bark then you know there's just so much of it if you were to flatten this out and spread it out over an area it would just be endless amounts of sculpting so you want to try to use uh, as much as you can some sort of tiling texture now if you're good at designer that would be a great place to do your tiling texture because um, you can get a really nice uh, tree barky type shapes in there and you could use that directly into UE4 tile it across a tree you could even just use it on a cylinder and tile it across a tree it would probably get a pretty good result but you could also then take that into the uh, into substance painter and tile it across something that you've sculpted as well so you're getting the benefit of both a sculpt and a bit of a tiling texture now if you go too far into your sculpt and get the kind of details that you've got in the tiling texture then they're never going to line up and they'll fight against each other so if you get the basic kind of overall shapes and volumes so you know um, these kind of shapes with the big indentations so like the cross cut of shape and then the smaller shapes like what you might see like bark like this that can be your tiling texture that way it will overlay on the bigger shapes and you'll get a better blend between the two it won't be perfect but it should be pretty good uh, but if you go into too much detail then you're going to have to try to get all the detail in the sculpt and it's just not good for anything that's large you know if you're going to go for full on sculpting detail you want to do it just on like a stump or something like that but on a full tree that's just a recipe for a, a bad time to be honest so again you know this tree is just stylized and you want to spend you know a few hours sculpting your tree getting it the right shape i'm just going to do this really quickly because you know this is just a demonstration i don't want anything too time consuming Now, if you use the auto polish tool, you know, you can't use that as the last thing you do because it is very obvious. It leaves a lot of hard edges um, and looks, uh, well, you can just tell what's been done and it looks quite samey as well. Okay, so I've just done that really quickly. It's not got the kind of detail I'd like to put in it, but it's not bad for a few minutes. Um, so what I'm gonna do is duplicate this and I'm going to select one of these, like this. And I'm going to go to split mast points and then delete the rest of it. Okay, so now if we go to move, I have another branch here. So what I'm going to do is just scale that down a little bit. And I want to close a hole in here so I can go down to uh, Geometry and go to the Modified Topology section and hit Close Holes. And then we can Dynamesh this again. 
and now I want to kind of just place this somewhere on this tree so this is going to be one of my secondary branches um, so let's get this into a rough shape first of all it's going to be kind of holding up that canopy and I'm just going to get rid of some of the details on that so that it doesn't look so obvious a copy So I'm going to use that one and then I'm going to duplicate this. And this one I am going to, if I select that and hold control and move it, it will copy it onto the same layer and mask the other section of it. And then I can make a smaller branch coming off that one. And then I'm just going to inflate that a touch. Don't want any ends getting too small here, or else it'll get really tricky to work with. And then we can dynamesh those together. Smooth that out. And I might make one more. So I'm going to go back to that one again. Again, I'm just going to hit duplicate. And let's just put it over here so I can see what this looks like. Let's scale that down. Okay then, so these are going to be my extra branches, so I'm just going to move them into a better position. So these are my extra branches that we'll decorate the top of it with, and we'll attach our cards to them. So now we need to generate a high and a low poly of this, so I'm just going to bake all these together. So I'm just going to merge all these together to make it easier to work with, because we're not running higher. In fact, our total poly count is only 383, so it's really easy to work with. So actually, if we just merge all these down, so I can just export this out as is for my high poly. Um, so I'm going to call this simple tree trunk high poly. And then we want to make a low poly version of this. Now, it's the, the, the best result would be to hand re apologize this, but I uh, want to do it the fast <laughs> and ugly way. And so we're probably best off going with zero mesher. Now, zero mesher does like to spiral stuff, which isn't great for trying to unwrap this. We want to get some nice, neat lines down them. Um, so what we can do to try and help this along is if we go to our brush palette here and type in Z, we can find our Z remesh guide. And then what we can do with this is just draw that guide down the tree trunk to help show what kind of uh, topology shape we want to have on these trees. And we can go around it as well, just grabbing hold of the end, very carefully drawing across. Uh, if you don't want to use the zero mesher guides, you can use uh, poly paint, so you can draw in the shape of your cage with your poly paint. Uh, another way is to slice your mesh up into poly groups and it will try to keep with the edge of them slices. Okay, so let's give that a go. So that's too many polys at the moment. Let's go a bit further with this. So I'm gonna to go to zero, back to zero mesh and I'm gonna type in 0.5 for the target polygons and hit zero mesh again. That's a little bit better. So now we wanna see if our loops are spiraled, so we can go to our uh, Z modeler and if we hover over an edge and put an edge loop in, we can see whether it's spiraled. We can see it's actually not spiraled. A bit too low poly there. These have just turned into squares, that's not good. So that's one way of doing it. Um, you know, it's, it's okay. There's some overly dense parts and some that just don't have enough like these branches here have just gone to cubes but I can add a few more loops back to them within Maya um, but the only other option would be to decimate this other than doing it by hand and decimation would probably get you a pretty good result we just want to be able to lay them flat really um, and make sure that the silhouette is quite nice uh, but I think this will do for what it is so I'm going to export this as my low poly So back in Maya, I can import my low poly and get rid of the old tree. And first thing we want to do is just soften this mesh. So we can go to modify uh, mesh display, uh, soften edge. And now we've got our new tree here. 
so we don't need the bottom of these branches unless you want to kind of use them as branches to scatter on the floor but I don't want to do that so I'm just going to delete the bottom polys of these and I just want to add an extra loop to this one here so I'm just going to delete the top face and the bottom face I'm going to go to add edge loop and put edge flow on and then just shift control and snap that make it a little bit rounder once the mesh is cleaned up a little bit we can begin by cutting the branches off I'm going to make this a little bit easier by putting a bit more of a loop into this then you want to try and hide the seams as much as possible so that's probably best done by putting the seam across the top edge of your branches as much as you can so we cut that and then grab that and unfold it I'm going to do the same for the main trunk And we want to arrange them so that they're pointing up the sheet. And do the same for these as well. That way, if we have a tiny texture, we know it's going in one direction. And you want to make sure that the um, textile density is the same. So just to double check that, you can get the size. Once you've laid it out, you can get the size of your main tree trunk. Go to Transform, Get. And then if you select everything, you can hit Set. And that'll just make sure that they've all got the same textile density. And you can check that by hitting the checker box as well. And just making sure the checkers are the same across all of them. So now we've unwrapped that. Let's delete history, freeze transformations. We are almost done with our simple tree. We've got our low and high poly trunk and we have our branches, smaller branches ready to go on it as well. All right then, so it's time to make our branch cards. So with this being unwrapped here, we could uh, make these cards as part of this sheet because we have got this extra space here. That would be a good optimized way of doing it but it's a little bit more tricky to set up um, an easier way would be to arrange this on a card of their own and um, have just two textures for this tree and that's a normal way especially for bigger trees for smaller trees you might want to put them all onto the same card um, and you could do that afterwards by just cutting the the two texture sheets together making sure that you put them in a place where there is a gap for them or you could you could make the cards for these and then move the cards onto UVs and arrange them and bake them. But for simplicity's sake, probably the easiest way is to just arrange this onto a sheet, bake it down, make these as cards first, and then texture the trees separately. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just going to drag out a um, square here with a plane. So I'm gonna make that four by four. Doesn't really matter what size it is. And I want to make sure that is one-to-one -one on the UV sheet. I'm just going to find the top of that as well. I want to make sure it's the right, right way around. So that's one-to-one -one with no gaps. So I'm happy with that. And that's going to be our uh, branch sheet, our alpha. So I'm going to grab each one of these and arrange it onto that sheet and try to make sure that I've got plenty of room. So I'm going to do this in top view. And uh, it's quite common to see these arranged uh, to get the most out of the sheet by scaling them up and, and turning them so that they, they fit in more like a jigsaw puzzle. But I want these brown branches to be kind of as vertical as possible so that I can run a tile and texture up them if I need to. Um, so that means 
they're going to have to pretty much stay in a very unoptimized position. Let's see if we can scale them up a little bit. And you just want to make sure that they do not cross over each other and that they're going to be easy to cut out once this is baked. You also just want to make sure that you don't scale one up and not the other because then the leaves will start to look um, out of scale with each other. You want them to stay in the same proportions. I think maybe we could scale this up just slightly more. The bigger they are, the more pixels they'll get on the sheet, so it's always worth trying to do that. Get that as optimized as possible. Okay then, so once they're arranged, we want to make sure that the plane is roughly in the middle. So we can go back to perspective, move this plane up. So we can see at the moment as we've been moving them around, they've all kind of drifted off course. So we can just jump into the side view. And we just want to meet, make sure that we don't have to make the uh, baking envelope, the cage, too big. So just keep them on as similar plane as possible. All right then, so we can save that plane out. So I'm going to save that as branch tile. And then we can save these out as well, and this will be our high poly. Uh, for this one, though, I am going to subdivide these. So I made sure that if we hit three, that they smooth nicely. Um, this is just to get that extra little bit of softness. Uh, it's good quality as we can get out of it. So it won't save out with that smoothing on, so we need to go up here, and we need to subdivide this mesh. So this is going to take a while because there is a lot of individual components here. And you want to be careful with this when you're working with so many individual pieces. If you accidentally drag the divisions up, you can easily crash your machine because it'll try to make it into tens of millions when uh, Maya doesn't really handle that very well. So uh, we can accept that. And then File, Export, Selection, Export that. Once that's exported, I'm going to undo the subdivision on that so that um, my scene isn't so slow. And I also want to export the cleaned up mesh for my tree. And then now we can jump into Substance Painter and generate our branches. So start a new document in Substance Painter and select your select your branch tile. Once your tile's loaded up, we want to go to Bake Mesh Maps and in High Definition Meshes, we want to load in our high poly branches. Now if we just leave the settings the same uh, as is and just do that, do a quick bake. We can see what we're left with, which is really not what we want at all. So there's a few things going on here. It's not picking up all the information. It's low resolution, and it's also adding a lot of dilation to the edges of it, which means we won't be able to get our alpha map out properly. Uh, so we can come back to the baked mesh maps, and we want to just uh, remove the dilation, and that will remove the streaks from the edges. Now, they are good for texture resolution changes, so we might want to save out a version with them eventually, but for now, uh, we can remove that dilation. Next, we want to increase the frontal and rear distance. So I'm just going to set this quite high. And I'm going to leave it like that for now. So now we can see uh, it looks like we're picking up all the details. I can't see any branches being cut off by the size of the bait cage. It looks pretty neat. And if we look at the UVs as well, everything is on the tile. Nothing's crossed over. So now we can go back to our bake settings and increase the quality. Now, so if we go to output size and change it to 2K, scroll down to the anti-aliasing and change that to 4x4 or maybe even 8x8. Make sure that the color source on material so that we get a nice ID map between the green leaves and the brown branches. And once you're happy with that, hit bake. Okay, so now we can see that has baked nicely, nice and crisp. Um, so we can because these leaves are all running in different directions, we can't do anything like uh, tip to base gradients um, because there is no set direction for this. So we kind of have to be a little bit more general with this. Um, so if we have a look down at curvature, we have got like an edge detection. So we can do some edge color and we've even got a slightly darker center as well. So we can get a little bit of variation with this, uh, but mainly if you want the leaves to have a few different colors, then you might want to add a few different more colors to your leaves in Maya to make your ID map from. So at the moment, if we look at this ID map, it really is just 
green and brown so if you added say maybe a yellow leaf or you know just a few more colors to this then you'd have a few more colors to select from that way giving yourself uh, the ability to add maybe some dead leaves in there as well depending on what you want to go for but this is enough for us we can get a nice simple stylized look with this so let's go back to material and let's create two folders one for the branch and one for the leaves and then let's create a color to go into them so some brownie color and one for the leaf as well okay and then into each of these folders we can put our colors so let's just separate them so in the branch we right click and go to add mask with color selection and then select the branch and the same with the leaf as well add mask with color selection and select the leaves you can see uh, at first we get this kind of white line between it where it's, it's separated them too much and we can manipulate that with the tolerance. So if we change it too high, we'll uh, color in everything. So you want to be careful how far you go with that. You can also change the hardness of that so you can soft, make it that edges a little bit softer um, and get something that works pretty well. So the next step is to start to layer up the colors of these and get them right. So I'm going to start with the branch. So I'm just going to get the roughness about right, which is going to be quite matte. And the color of my branches are going to be a little bit driftwoody. So quite pale. And I'm going to shove a tiling texture above this. So I've got some brush stroke textures. So I'm going to drop that into my base color here. So this is an omnidirectional uh, brush stroke thing I made in uh, Photoshop really simple and I'm going to crease the entire in on this a little bit as well yeah I think I like the strokes running like that so then I can right click this and add a levels filter and in filter I can do a hue shift HSL perceptive and then I can get this to the right kind of hue and saturation that I want and then I want a, some sort of twisty lines up this as well to kind of match in with the sculpt that I did so I might actually do this by hand um, add a fill add a black mask um, let's make that fill dark darker brown and then I'm going to just do some streaks across this. So I'm going to add a paint to the black mask so that I can bring that back in with some streaks. So I'm just trying to get some lines going up this. So I'm using a brush that has quite a lot of uh, separation. And I'm just going to try and kind of get a little bit of that kind of twisty nature that I sculpted into the original tree back into it. Okay, and then we can go back to the fill for that and I want to turn off the roughness and everything and then let's see we could put this on as a multiply and bring down the amount okay, so that will do for now we can always come back to this um, and alter the colors afterwards so now let's, let's add a little bit of variation to the leaves so first of all let's get that color right A nice strange otherworldly blue I think and let's duplicate that and make the edges a little bit lighter so we can add a black mask to that add a generator and we want to use I think mask editor so we can see it's already picking up those edges so we've got the just straight up global balance and the contrast as well to sharpen those edges and if you want to uh, manipulate that a little bit more we can go to curvature here and we can turn down say the bigger softer areas if you just want like a very fine edge to it want to cavity let's just duplicate that again and this time let's make the color darker more green to it so if you are editing these and you're struggling to see anything 
um, it's sometimes useful to go to the color and change it to something really really bright uh, and that will show you definitely if you are getting anything from this at all so let's go back to the mask editor here so what we can do is grab the edges instead soften those out and then hit invert and we'll get just the edges and we'll get just the centers so we just need to make that soft enough so then we can come back to that color and change it to the actual color that we want final thing we want to do is add some opacity to this so what we can do is go to uh, texture set settings and in the base channels we can go to the plus icon and add a opacity and then in our layers we can create a new layer on top and we want to go to the properties and fill turn off everything but uh, opacity and we want to set that to black and then we can make another layer and again turn off everything but opacity and set that to white and then in that one we can go black mask add mask with color selection and then we can select the green and the brown and now we go to our materials and look at opacity you can see we have there we go we can see we have this so we just want to make sure that these lines are disappeared so again we can change the tolerance on that and there we have our opacity mask so save that and then export those textures so I'm going to just export them as UE4 ready for UE4 alright then so back in Maya we want to let's just duplicate this plane here and then we're going to add a new material and we can call this branch cards and we want to add our exported textures so I'm going to add the base color there and the base color on uh, saved out as UE4 does have a alpha with it anyway so if we go into if we turn on our textures here you can see that alpha's out because it adds the alpha from the color to the transparency so straight away we can see through this but you can also save out your own black and white mask and just shove it into transparency here and that should work but um, but this looks good now we can cut these out so I'm going to very quickly use the cut tool here to just slice it up into rough uh, quadrants so we've got one for each of our branches okay and then I'm going to just solo this let's just turn off that grid and then we can if we double click each one of these lines we can shift right click and detach components so that will detach each one of them faces and then if we select object mode and select it all and then go to mesh separate we now have these separated into different meshes. Now one thing we need to do is make sure that preserve UVs on so if we grab a vertex right now and move it it's going to skew that texture so we want to double click our tool go to the tools options and hit preserve UVs. Now if we move that vertex around it will keep uh, the UVs the same. So let's go through each one of these and get it so that it fits nicely and we want to uh, try to be as close to the leaves as possible uh, to avoid too much alpha overdraw so that's when alphas are stacked up in front of each other and they have to render through each other that takes a lot of system power um, so to reduce alpha overdraw you want to keep these uh, nice and tight and then you want a line running down the center so that we can add some curve to this and we want to cut across so again we can add we can introduce a bend to this sheet once it's ready to go on the tree so we can delete the excess okay then so now we've got our branches we can delete the history freeze transformations center pivot and now we want to move the pivot to the bottom of each branch so we want to select each one hold D and V grab the very center the yellow dot and snap it to that bottom most pivot that's why you want to kind of uh, make sure that the branch touches the bottom of these cards so that when you snap these into place that is going to be definitely touching okay delete history on that okay then so our branches are done and baked let's get this textured 
and make sure there's no errors with this and then we can start to populate this tree with our branches. So let's go back to Substance Painter and load in our low poly tree. And I want to use some of the same shaders for this. I don't need the leaf one, I just want the branches. So I'm going to just update this file. So make sure this is saved so that you can come back to it. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Project Configuration. And I'm going to select a new base mesh, which for this one is our Simple Tree A. Okay. So that's loaded in our tree, and you can see the old texture is on this. Let's just take a look at the UVs, make sure they look okay. Yeah, that all looks in the right position. And so next we want to bake our new materials onto this. So I don't need the streaks that I painted in. So let's just delete that layer. Okay, and I'm also going to go to save as. So make sure you do not save over the top. And I want to change this to Simple tree A. Can also get rid of the opacity maps. So we don't need that for the tree. Then we can go to texture set settings, bake mesh maps, and I'm going to reduce the settings of these again so that we can do a quick bake. And I want to make all these go down to 0 0.01, 0 0.01 and change the sampling down as well to none. So we do a test bake. So we want to remove the old high poly and load in our high poly from ZBrush. Okay, and because they are uh, uh, directly over the top of each other, that should work just fine. So we bake select to textures. We should see them details come on no problem. Okay, so once that's done, let's just, uh, let's just hide all these colors. We want to look around this mesh and make sure that there's no errors. Looks like there's some cut off here. Let's make sure that it's no textures. All right, so there might be a little issue here. So let's increase the settings of this and see what else happens. So I want to increase the size to uh, 1K and the anti aliasing up to 2. Getting this flat area here now that might be that the mesh is just too far away to pick up the high poly so let's go back to bait mesh and in this time let's increase the frontal and rear distance a little bit bake that again and you can see this time that has seemingly got rid of that so we can run through our um, baked maps and see that there is now no problem there uh, so we are getting these seams here, and I think that's because we turned the dilation off for the last one. So we go back to bait mesh maps, go to dilation, and just scroll that up. Okay, so let's uh, try that with the dilation up. Now you can see those seams have disappeared. So it's stretched the, uh, the very edge of the textures on all the seams so that the seams are then completely covered or filled in with the uh, same information as the very last pixel on every seam. Now we can see that there is a little error here. There's a hard edge being baked in there. So we need to go back to our model and take a look at that. So you can see that hard edge there. Um, so we need to select this and then go mesh display soften edge. So if you leave hard edges on your low poly, they will bake through and they'll fight with the high poly. So we need to make sure that this is completely softened. So we can re-export that. Uh, simple tree A. And then to update this, we can simply go to Edit, Project Configuration, reselect our simple tree. So you can see that's disappeared slightly, but we still need to rebate this. But we need to increase the settings anyway. So I'm going to increase this to 2K and then bake that again. Now we have a nice smooth bake with all our details from our sculpt coming through onto our low poly. So now we can turn on our layers from our leaf branches. And we want to keep the colors the same, but we want to start to make it look a little bit nicer on the actual mesh. So this is with a color selection. We can get rid of that and remove the mask. Okay, so straight away I can see that I need to change the tiling amount of this. So let's go to that first of all. Now I want to add some extra layers. So I want some darker stuff in the cavities and some brighter edges. So we can, uh, let's just duplicate this bottom one. Put this up here and I'm going to make this one brighter so I'll do the edge highlights first. 
Is that maybe add a little bit of blue to that? Let's see what that looks like. Uh, so I'm going to add a black mask to that and then add a generator. And again, like always, add a mask editor to the generator so we can start to build this edge highlights in here. So it looks pretty good straight away. Let's grab the curvature. So I might do two here. I might do a nice large soft one. Blending of this. Change it to value maybe. And then I want a sharper one on top of that. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer and go back to that mask editor. And I want to make this a little bit whiter and change the value up to 100 so I can see it. And then I just want this to be much, much finer. So back to the mask editor, go to the curvature and I'm going to get rid of the big ones and just go for the sharp and fine details. So you can see that just Highlighting those edges. That's layered up over the top of the bigger highlight. And I don't need to break this up. Normally if this was a say rust or edge chips on, on um, paint or something, then I'd want to break it up. But as this is natural, I want it to be kind of the same all along it. But I, I do want to reduce the amount of that. So let's just scroll down on that. And just to see, I'm going to see what other colors might look like. Actually, it's just value, so it doesn't matter what color it is. It's always going to come out white. Okay, so next I'm going to add a little bit of cavity dirt or, or darkness. So let's uh, let's duplicate this. We'll start with this one again, and this time go to a nice dark color, and then let's go to that mask, and we can go for cavities in curvature so we go to curvature and change it to cavities and then pump the values up on this so let's just get this to 100% so we can see what we're doing here there we go pick out some of the streaks in that maybe soften it off a little bit okay so I quite like this the last thing I want to do is add a bit of a gradient to the overall um, height of the trunk so let's um, let's create another layer and make that a color and then I don't want any roughness or anything like that I just want this to be in color and I'm not really adding much roughness to this tree yet I might do that as a second layer over the top and there's a few different ways we can do that we've got like gradient textures we can use a smart mask like the um, dirt from the ground or we can do a top layer down gradient but I'm going to use the generator again and use the height for this so if we right click this and add a black mask and then add a generator in that generator we can add a mask editor and in this mask editor if we scroll down we've got world space normal position gradient so let's try position gradient so if we scroll that up you can see it's got uh, more of the gradient at the top and less at the bottom so we can invert that with a global invert and then it's also got a bit of curvature in this as well so it depends you might want that you might want to not just have it complete gradient up you might want to use the curvature but I'm just gonna scroll that down because I don't want that and I don't want it on these branches either so I want it pretty much just this bottom bit of the trunk here so let's open up that position gradient and I'm going to manipulate the balance of that so it's just at the bottom of this trunk and I want to increase the contrast as well because it's uh, almost all the way up to the top there so I want the full colour to shine through here and I don't want to be on these branches because these are quite blue at the bottom and as they're going to be intersecting around about here that's going to make a very clear line between the intersections. This bottom of this branch here needs to be exactly the same colour as this. So I want to make sure that gradient does end fairly soon. So let's go to this and grab a, um, a folder and drag that gradient into that folder. And then add a black mask to that folder. And then add a paint to that black mask. And then we can go over here to the polygon fill and select, well we can do it by UV, uh, that's a 
that's tries, polygons, meshes, and UVs. So let's just select UV, and then we want to just drag and click on these ones. Oh, actually undo that, because that's white. We actually want to drag and click on this one, and we want to make sure these ones are filled in with black. And then if we go off that, you can see that we no longer got radiant on these. So this folder and anything in it is just affecting the um, main trunk here. So we can come back to this now and we can mess around with the color and get something that works for our scene. All right then, so I'm happy with that for now. And remember, you can always come back to this afterwards as well. That's the beauty of, of Painter and this kind of pipeline is that it's so easy just to get something out, get it together, see the, the base colors work, and then come back to it and just add more detail. So for example, I've not really done anything with the roughness maps. So I might find that I want some breakup in this roughness map afterwards, but for now this will do. Um, and I can easily come back to that and resave that out as long as I keep all my files nice and neat. So let's export them out. Um, back in Maya, I can now apply that material. And that looks pretty good. So now let's just hide these canopies and we can start to transfer these to these branches here. So I'm just going to hide everything that we don't need. And let's just scale these down because they're quite big at the moment. So these are all on mesh, so we can go to mesh and separate. And then let's snap these to the bottom of the branches here. And get them in the middle so that they can be snapped onto this tree. All right then, so we're almost ready to decorate the tree. We just need to prep these cards. Um, so first of all, let's duplicate them one by one. So go like that. And then we duplicate the card and spin it on its axis. And we want to line the, uh, the point that it's spinning up a little bit. So if we just go like this, we want to get them kind of cutting through so they look quite nice. So I want to make sure that um, Preserve UV is now switched off because I want these to bend with the cards. And all I'm doing here is just aligning that center column up so that it works with that. So now when we look around this tree, we have cards from all sides. So. We don't want to do this with all our branches. It depends on the shape of your tree. You might want to put some kind of flat to the front so that all the cards are facing around if you want kind of like a, a ball of, of leaves. So it really depends on what you're making and it can be it can be difficult. It can take time to, to get right. Um, it might take a couple of attempts uh, to, to do them in various shapes, but I'm just going to make a copy of these and do a three-dimensional ones so that I have them ready if I need them. I'm going to leave it at that for now. We can combine these ones, make sure the pivot's still in the correct place. So I'm going to move these off to one side. So let's start decorating these branches. So I think it'd probably be easier if I rotate these because they're going to be mainly kind of in place like this. So I want the branches and the leaves to stick in a certain direction. Let's take this one first of all. And I think again, I'm gonna duplicate these and make a second version where they're bent. So let's get this and go to deform, nonlinear bend. Now you can see it's gonna bend across there. So if I just increase the curvature of that and then rotate it into place. We've got a bend to this now. That should do. I want to do the same for each one of them. So I can just hit G, bend, and hitting G on the keyboard just repeats the last um, thing used. In this case, it's this deform. So my canopies, the little balls that I put in place, I want to be quite dense and all kind of curve and stick upwards. So I don't want any kind of leaves pointing downwards. I want to be able to see all the branches from underneath. Um, but that's just my type of treat. So I think 
that bending these will will kind of get that effect that I want. Um, but it might not. Uh, just have to give it a go really and see what happens. So we can delete the history and freeze transformations of these. Now let's start placing them on this this branch, this first branch. So if we grab one, these still might be a little bit big actually. Now because we bent these, the um, the pivots in the wrong place. So if we hold D and V and just snap them back to the right point, it'll make it a lot easier, a lot easier to actually place these on the branches if we do that. Let's delete the history of those and freeze transformations. Now we can start populating these onto our branch. So um, I'm going to rotate them all upwards. I think that'll be easier. And then holding, then I'm going to duplicate and hold V and then snap them to a vert on this branch. And just like we did with the previous layer of branches, just start to place them around and get something that looks nice. And you want to make sure those branches are intersecting nicely as well so that you can't see any ends. And for that extra level of manipulation as well, you can go to vertex mode, hold B, scale up that soft select and just move stuff in to position or curve it around a little bit more just to get it right. It doesn't all have to be exactly uh, the same. So do that for the rest of your branches and you can even make multiple different versions as well. I've only got three branches here, but I could make five different canopies for each one if I wanted to, but I'm just going to stick with these, populate the tree and then um, see if I need anything else after that. But once you've made a few branches, uh, you can combine these together. Now, a little tip for doing this is that if you select them all and make sure that the last thing you select has the pivot in the right place, we can go to uh, Mesh, Combine, Settings, and just make sure that uh, pivot position is set to last object. So as long as the uh, the one of the objects has the pivot in the correct place that you want, and you select that one last, and then hit Combine, that's where your pivot will be. It makes it a lot easier, and you don't have to re-manipulate the pivot if you've already got that pivot set somewhere. So we can then delete the history of those reset the transformations now we have uh, now we're at the last stages we can start to actually populate this tree with those branches as you can see just sliding those in there there is obviously a slight um, line where they go in but from a distance and because the textures line up pretty well um, it's very hard to actually see that and looks pretty good especially for a game asset so I've got my canopies back up here and I'm going to use them as a bit of a guide for the placement of these branches. I might change it, but this is a good start anyway. So if I grab these canopies and I think this floor as well. I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to create a new layer with objects. Uh, just right click and add selected objects to them. And I'm going to call this uh, layout. And then I'm going to hit the on that so that they stay as like a ghost frame so now I can't select them but they stay there as kind of like a frame for me to use as a reference so these look like they need to be size scaled down a little bit and I want to scale them all at the same time so I need these branches to be a bit smaller so I'm going to select them all and just scale them down that way they fit in a little bit better Okay then, so after putting a few of these together, it's clear that I need to make some adjustments to the original cards. That mostly being the thickness of the foliage on each branch, and also uh, maybe an additional card that doesn't have any branches in, something that I can use as a filler. So luckily, because of the way we've done this, we can simply fill these branches out a little bit, and then uh, rebate this in Substance Painter, and that should just update, and we can carry on with building our tree. Okay, so I'll add a patch of leaves for my filler piece, and I'll also go around each branch, snap some off, and add some in the background underneath to make it look a little bit more full. But I'm also going to add some small ones in front just to separate that stem so that the stem doesn't stay as one long unbroken piece and is a little bit more hidden. 
Now I can export them as a high poly, go back into my Substance Painter file, rebate the high poly, export those textures out, and that's it. We can continue decorating our tree with these new updated cards. So then I can make a new card for that extra piece. And this time I'm gonna make a, another selection of these cards by using the deformer and curving them both ways so that we have more of an round shape to each card because my canopy is going to be kind of globular and so I want it to curve neatly up and over and of course this is very dependent on what type of tree you're going to do but that's the kind of stylized effect I want to go for for this. Once I start to fill this tree out I can see that I need to make a new little set of cards using the new one that I made, the filler. Um, and this can kind of help to fill the gaps that don't have branches reaching to them. And also I think I'll probably make one that goes on top of the tree as well. So that that completes the look of this kind of round globular canopy. Okay, so once the canopy is all together, the last thing we need to do is make sure that the normal direction on the leaves is all facing the correct way. Uh, and that will help solve some shadowing issues that you might get within UE4 um, and just make it look nicer overall. So the first thing we want to do is just combine all this together. And then we need to separate the leaves from the branches and we can do that with the textures. So go to rendering editors and then hypershade. And then in hypershade you need to find your branch material. And then we can go to, we can go to edit select objects from materials and that will select all the faces that have that material applied to it if we isolate this deselect it and then just select the faces we can then separate that from the rest of the mesh so if we shift right click and go to extract faces we now have the leaf and the branches um, as separate objects so this is where we need the guide that we made for the canopy again so we need to kind of bend this into the shape so it encompasses all our new canopy leaves and we can do that with the soft select so if you go to vertex mode select a vert and hit B on the keyboard it will activate soft select and if you hold B and drag with middle mouse button you can decrease and increase the size of that soft selection so you just want to warp this until it kind of covers all your leaves and now we can transfer those vertex normal attributes. So first of all, we need to be able to see the vertex normal direction. So if we go to display polygons and turn on vertex normals, that will display the vertex normals. So you need to do that for both the, uh, the guide canopy and the cards. If you can't see the vertex normals, then next you need to select them all again, go back to display, polygons and this time select normal size and just ramp that normal size up. So now we want to transfer these lovely neat normal directions from these spheres to the ugly messy card normal directions and we can do that simply by going to mesh down to transfer attributes and clicking on the options box we want to make sure that everything is set off except for vertex normals and that also that the sample space is set to local and hit apply. This will transfer the normals. Now you can see the all are facing in the same direction and you want to do that for all your canopies that you have. With all that done, we can recombine our tree and then we want to make sure that the pivot point is at the bottom of the tree and slightly inside so that the floor of the tree will um, clip through the ground that we place it on within UE4 just slightly. And so delete history, freeze transformations, make sure it's in the center of the world and export that as an FBX ready for UE4. Okay then, so in UE4 we want to drag and drop our tree FBX into our content browser and hit import. Next we want to make our materials, so make one for the tree trunk, the branches, and one for the canopy, so the leaves. Next, we need to drag and drop our textures that we produce into our content browser. So you'll have three for each one here, and two of those will be mix maps where you'll have to turn the sRGB off because they exist in a linear space. So click on them ones, turn sRGB off, and then set up those into your materials. So first of all, let's start with the tree trunk. Drag and drop your free uh, textures into the tree trunk, and you want to put the base color into base color the normal map into normal and then for the mix map you want to put the red channel into ambient occlusion the green channel into roughness and the blue channel into metallic and then hit save 
If we go back to our tree now, we can drag and drop that tree trunk material into one of our slots. We find the right one, which is the top one on this. And we can see that's looking pretty good. So now let's set up the leaves again. So let's drag the leaf textures in and set it up the same as before. Um, but this time when it comes to the mix map, we just want to set up the roughness and the metallic and not the ambient occlusion because that can cause uh, dark spots on our canopy. And if you grab hold of the material, we can change the it to the blend mode to masked. And you want to change the shading model to two sided foliage and also tick on two sided. So this will give us a subsurface color and to set up the surface color, we want to plug the base color into that slot, but we want to have a little bit of control over this. So if we hold M on the keyboard and create a multiply node and hold one on the keyboard to create a constant, uh, we can right click that constant and change it to a parameter and we can call this sub strength, plug that into B and then grab the base color and plug that into A and then the result of that into subsurface color. So then that will give us some control over that. You then want to grab the A for the alpha channel in your base color and drag that into the opacity masked. Hit save, right click your leaf material and create material instance. This will allow us to use the parameters we created. So drag that into your leaf slot and your tree is ready to be used in your scene. So I've got my tree here and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I think it's come out really nicely. There's some small issues with it uh, that I need to tweak. Uh, one of them being that there's some shadowing areas uh, which will be alleviated a little bit once I uh, tweak the subsurface scattering and there's also this harsh line in the middle caused by the intersecting of various cards and I think as well it needs to be fluffed out a little bit so some tweaking to the cards overall. And also if we go into our instance we can turn on sub strength and increase and decrease this to make that light shine through those leaves a little bit nicer and get rid of some of those darker shadows. So I've just modified the canopy in Maya. So I've saved that. We can go to UE4, right click the tree, click re-import and that will update the model. So now it's looking a lot more pleasing. And the last thing we need to do is make sure that those normals are correct. And we can do that by going back to our leaf material, scrolling down until we find tangent space normals and untick that apply that and now you can see those darker shadows have disappeared as the normals are all facing outwards. So I've got to say I'm pretty pleased with the way this has turned out. For a project that's only taken two or three hours I think it's a really nice result. So if you feel like you've gotten something from this video and you've enjoyed the content then please leave a comment. Any suggestions are welcome. Like and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next video.